Shalom, my name is Rabbi Johnny Solomon. I'm the Virtual Rabbi and Chief Learning Officer at WebYeshiva.org and this is Dear Rav Johnny, which is the name of a new podcast hosted by me and produced by WebYeshiva. As a Virtual Rabbi, I provide online spiritual coaching and halachic consultation services to men, women and couples. And during these sessions with my clients, I've been asked to address a broad range of real life and complex issues relating to faith, spirituality, and halacha. In Dear Rav Johnny, I shall be sharing some of the questions I've addressed with my clients, along with some of the Jewish teachings which I've learned with them. And for all those who are interested, I'll also be making any sources that I quote in Dear Rav Johnny available in the show notes. Of course, if the issues that I address in Dear Rav Johnny inspire you to book a single or series of virtual rabbi sessions with me, you can do so at webyeshiva.org forward slash about virtual rabbi. But even if this is not the case, I hope that you find these conversations informative and helpful. Having now told you a little about Dear Rav Johnny, let us begin. Shalom, hello, and welcome to episode two of Dear Rav Johnny, where we're going to address a really tough question about prayer, which many people think about, but are often very reluctant to ask about. Here is Michael with his question. Dear Rav Johnny, my uh, name is Michael, 56 years old. Unfortunately, my mother is uh, very sick in the hospital. Uh, my siblings... Uh, have been urging me to join the Hill and groups, pay for my mother's refuel, complete recovery. However, given her current condition, honestly, from a medical point of view, there is nothing more we can do for her. And it seems to me that the only thing that we can do is pray, as hard as it sounds and horrible as it sounds, but pray for a quick and pain-free death. However, when I share these sentiments with my siblings, they become angry at me. And they accuse me of not showing love to our mother. Truly, truly upsets me. They also accuse me of lacking faith uh, in Hashem. Uh, My question to you really is, in such a situation, can we pray for the death of someone we love? Does this show a lack of faith in Hashem's ability to heal? I thank you very much, and may we only uh, share much good news. Thank you. Okay, so that's a tough question. However, it's a kind of question which I have been asked many times over the years, which touches on a broad range of very sensitive issues. Love, loyalty, family, faith, health, and hope. And given this, I'd like to answer Michael's question with a kind of clarity, nuance, and sensitivity, which it most certainly deserves. So when someone we love is ill, when they're sick, our immediate response is to harness every available tool in our physical, emotional, and spiritual toolbox to help them in their road to recovery. And this is why even those who don't generally pray do turn to prayer when someone they love is unwell. Because in such moments, they are prepared to do whatever it takes to help their loved one get better. Now, so far this applies to a regular situation. But what about the case that Michael is asking us about, where his mother's medical prognosis is bleak? In such a situation, is it not futile for Michael to pray for her to get better? In fact, perhaps we may claim that doing so constitutes a tefillat shav, a profane prayer, which will likely weaken Michael's faith given the unlikelihood of his mother getting better. Now, there are those who insist that we should pray for the refuah for the healing of people no matter their conditional prognosis, of whom many turn to biblical figures for precedent. For example, Yitzchak prayed for Rivka despite the fact that she was physically unable to have children. 
This seems to suggest that we should always pray to God for healing, even if the healing that is needed requires a medical miracle. But while many Jewish thinkers over the centuries have spoken about the power of prayer, including those like Rabbeinu Bachia in his commentary to Devarim 11.13, and his, in, in his Kada Kemach, in his entry on Tefillah, who specifically mentions the prayers of Yitzchak and Rivka to make the case that prayer has a capacity to change nature, a careful reading of our poskim, of our halachic decisors, who speak about the value of praying for healing in dire situations, points to the fact that they don't associate prayers for refua as prayers for miracles. For example, Rav Steinman records a view of the Chazon Ish in the Sefer Per Hador, volume 4, page 34, that even if someone's medical situation is dire and irretrievable, we must pray for that person to get better. However, he then explains why this is the case. Because, At any moment it is possible for the doctors or medical researchers to find a treatment or cure. Consequently, There is still hope. What we see from the response of the Chazonish is an approach that requires that we pray for someone no matter their diagnosis, not because we expect a miracle, but rather because a medical treatment might be found and the patient may then get better. Similarly, Rav Moshe Feinstein in Igrot Moshe Yoradeh, Volume 2, Number 146, makes the argument that we should still have hope in such a situation as it is possible that, in the very near future, a medical solution or remedy may be found. Still, in contrast to the Chazon Ish, who says, Tzarich palel, we must pray, Rav Moshe Feinstein writes that in such a situation, Rasha im palel, we may pray and that doing so is not considered a tefillat shav, a profane prayer. So in summary, the Chazon Ish says that we must pray to God for a medical solution, no matter what condition the patient is in, or if Moshe Feinstein says that it is permitted but not obligatory to pray to God for a medical solution, no matter what condition the patient may be in. Applying this to Michael's situation, it seems that both he and his siblings have halachic support for their views. His siblings reflect the view of the Chazonish that they must pray for her recovery, while Michael reflects Rabbi Feinstein's opinion that while he can pray for his mother's recovery, he is not obligated to do so. Still, is there any justification found in rabbinic sources to pray for a quick and pain-free death? of a loved one? The simple answer to this question is yes. Specifically, this lesson is derived from a story found in Gemark Tubot, Kufdal Damad Aleph, page 104a, which informs us of the final days of Rebbe, Rabbi Yudha Anasi, where, upon realizing how ill Rebbe was, his righteous maid uttered a prayer that he heal from his illness. And she said as follows, The upper realms are requesting the presence of Rabbi Anasi, and the lower realms are requesting the presence of Rabbi Yudha Anasi. May it be the will of God that the lower worlds should impose their will upon the upper worlds. However, once she saw that Rebbe was suffering, the maid then beseeched God, saying, May it be the will of God that the upper worlds should impose their will upon the lower worlds. Based on this Gemara, it seems that it is permitted to pray for someone to die. In fact, further evidence for this position can be found in the remark of Rabbi Akiva in Gemara Nadarim, Mem Anud Aleph, Nadarim, page 40a, who stated that if we know people who are sick, we should either pray for their recovery or their death. As Aran Rabbeinu Nisim writes in his commentary to Nadarim, There are times when someone is suffering from their illness and they are unable to recover when we need to pray to God that he so mercy towards them and that they should die. As Rosh Hashanah Zaman Orbach explained in his Minchat Shlomo, 
in such a situation, mitzvah lavakesh alav shamut. It is a mitzvah to pray that the patient die. As such, Michael is seemingly justified in praying that his mother have a quick and pain-free death. So to summarize, so far we've encountered actually three different approaches to the question of praying for someone who is seriously sick, for whom there is no known medical intervention that can heal them. A. You must pray for their healing. B. You may pray for their healing. And C. You may pray, and perhaps in some cases it may be a mitzvah and the right thing to do to pray for them to die. The problem, of course, is that each person who holds each view believes themselves to be right and often thinks that those who do not hold their view have a confused understanding of faith while lacking his faith, that we heard from the siblings of Michael in their critique towards him. With this in mind, I'd like to quote a story involving Rav Shimon Schwab and Rabbi Pesach Krohn, as found in Rabbi Dr. Chaim Ehrman's My Rebbe Rav Schwab, pages 379 to 380. And he says as follows. One Friday night, Rabbi Schwab hosted a visitor from Brooklyn for the Shabbos Suda, Pesach Krohn. Rabbi Krohn's father was in Columbia Presbyterian Hospital, located near Washington Heights, with a serious heart condition. The Rav asked him, how is your father doing? Rabbi Krohn responded, not too well, but I have bitachon, I have faith, that Hashem will make him better. The Rav asked, how do you know that Hashem wants him to get better? Rabbi Krohn was dumbfounded. How could a Rav ask such a question? Doesn't Hashem want the best for every person? The Rav explained to Rabbi Krohn that, of course, Hashem wants the best for every person. However, what we consider best for us may in reality not be best that Hashem has in mind. Hashem sees a situation from many more angles than we can possibly fathom. On every Shabbos we state in the davening, the laws of Hashem are truthful, they are righteous together. Hashem may have a different assessment than you have, and perhaps a negative outcome may actually be better for you in the long run. A few days later, Rabbi Krohn's father passed away. He said that the Rav's explanation made it easier for him to accept the passing of his father. To my mind, this is an important story, because very often, when a loved one is very sick, there can be heated disagreements between family members about what to do. Some believe that you must pray for their healing. Others believe that you may pray for their healing, while others believe that it is permitted to pray for them to die. As mentioned, there are great Torah scholars, scholars holding different views on this question. Still, there is something incredibly important about the words of Rabbi Schwab, which is that we shouldn't be so sure that we know what God wants. Instead, all we know is what we want. And as the story of Rebbe's maid clearly demonstrates, sometimes the upper realms and the lower realms have conflicting desires. Thank you for listening to this episode of Dear Rav Johnny. If you have any thoughts or feedback about what was discussed in this episode, please send me an email to ravjohnny at webyeshiva.org. Beyond this, if you also have a question about faith, religion, or spirituality, then please write to me at ravjohnny at webyeshiva.org, and it is possible that your question will be featured in a future episode of Dear Rav Johnny. Additionally, I'll be very grateful if you could share this podcast wherever you may be watching or listening with your friends and family. If you are interested in my virtual rabbi online spiritual coaching or halachic consultation service, visit webyeshiva.org forward slash about virtual rabbi, where you can book a free, no obligation discovery call to discuss how I can help you. Of course, if you are listening to this podcast, then I am sure you'll enjoy the many free online interactive classes and courses on Tanakh, Talmud, Halakha, and Jewish thought, which are available at Web Yeshiva. And so please visit webyeshiva.org to check out our huge menu of options. Thank you to Tomer Adadi for permission to use his beautiful piano music 
to the intro and outro of this podcast. And lastly, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, I'm sending you blessings from Israel and wishing you shalom.